All right, diving right into it today, we're going to unpack how a seemingly simple comparison, like one line of text, can actually spark, well, a really complex debate about global affairs. You know what I mean? I do. I do. It's remarkable, actually, how analogies have this power to make sense of, like, really complicated situations, especially in something like geopolitics. Exactly, exactly. But at the same time, anytime you simplify things, you got to be super careful, right? You risk missing important details. For sure. Oversimplification, definitely a trap. And that's precisely what we're going to be digging into today. Absolutely. So the text that landed on our radar, it tackles the relationship between Pakistan and India, drawing this really bold comparison to, get this, the Israel-Palestine conflict. Right, right. And it kind of jumps right in, doesn't it? It basically suggests that um, Pakistan's stance on Palestine, or maybe their silence on certain issues, could embolden India to act, well, kind of like Israel, putting Pakistan at risk. Hmm. Yeah, and it's it's heavy stuff. I mean, hmm. to even put these two conflicts side by side like that, it almost feels, I don't know, a bit much, you know? Yeah, I see what you mean. It's definitely a strong statement. And what makes it even more... Um, intriguing is the way it uses the word Israel written in Arabic. Oh, interesting. I didn't even catch that. Yeah, say. It makes you think about the intended audience, right? Almost like it's trying to resonate with those who understand Arabic, maybe even suggesting this need for unity, mm -hmm. you know, among certain groups. That's a really good point. And then, of course, there's that call to action at the end, right? Yeah. Release Imran Khan. It's like this whole other layer to the analogy. Totally. It's not just about making a comparison. It's about using that comparison to, well, mobilize people, right? Create a sense of urgency. Yeah, yeah. I see that. And the way they do it is interesting, too. By bringing up this parallel to Israel-Palestine, it's like they're tapping into some strong emotions, right? Fear, maybe even a bit of anger. It's like saying, look, this happened over there and it could happen here, too. It's a powerful tactic for sure. And we've seen this throughout history, haven't we? I mean, this idea of using analogies to rally support or, or even demonize opponents. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Like, think about the Cold War. Every time communism seemed to spread even a little, it was portrayed as what, like the first domino? Like the whole world was going to fall apart if they didn't stop it. It's that sense of impending doom. Very effective. So in this case, the author is using this pretty loaded analogy to try and rally support for Imran Khan. Mm -hmm. But even if the tactic is clear, the question remains, how accurate is this comparison between the two conflicts, really? Right, right. Because on the surface, you can see some similarities, I'll grant you that. Both situations, they involve these long-standing disagreements, territorial disputes, and there's this undeniable religious and ethnic element to them both. Right. Okay. So there are some parallels, but... Yeah. But to really understand if this analogy holds water, we got to look beyond just what's on the surface, you know? And that's where the differences become really important. For example, the geopolitical situations in India, Pakistan, and Israel, Palestine, way different. Okay, so unpack that a little bit. What are those differences? Well, well you've got to factor in where these conflicts are happening. I mean, India and Pakistan, they exist in a region where China is a major player, right? Uh, and that dynamic just isn't there in the Middle East which has its own whole set of alliances and, well, rivalries, you know? Absolutely. You can't ignore the surrounding context. Exactly. And this idea of power balance comes into play, too. Power balance. What Meaning the country's relative strengths and weaknesses. Like, how do their militaries stack up? What's their economic clout? You know, that kind of thing. And in this case, it's pretty different. I mean, Israel has strong allies and a certain level of regional influence. It's not a perfect comparison to India's position. So while this text is using a really dramatic comparison, you know, to highlight what could go wrong for Pakistan. Yeah. Those differences in the actual geopolitical realities, they make it practically impossible to say that one situation is a perfect predictor for the other. Exactly. And that's something everyone should keep in mind when they're trying to understand global events. Analogies, they can be useful, you know, as a jumping off point for a conversation, but they shouldn't be taken as like these ironclad prophecies. So it's kind of like it's a good starting point, but you can't stop there. You have to keep asking questions. Exactly. You always got to dig deeper. It reminds me of something you said earlier about oversimplification, hmm. because it's so easy to get caught up in the emotions that these analogies evoke. Right. And that's the danger. We got to remember to engage critically with the information, even if. Honestly, even if international relations isn't something you follow super closely, just being aware of these techniques, it's super helpful for navigating the world of news and information today. A hundred percent. I think the big takeaway here, the thing for everyone to remember is this. 
Approach these kinds of comparisons with a critical eye. Don't just take them at face value. Ask yourself, what are the similarities being highlighted? What differences are being, you know, maybe conveniently left out? Mm -hmm. And what is this person trying to get me to believe or do by making this comparison in the first place? Exactly. Be an active listener, an active thinker. Don't just let these comparisons wash over you. Engage with them. Push back a little. So next time you come across a historical parallel like this, whether it's about Pakistan and India, the conflict in Ukraine, or any global event really, just think back to this conversation. Ask yourself, is the comparison really insightful or is there more to the story, something to ponder? That's it. Keep those critical thinking skills sharp. Couldn't agree more.